Well, it's good to be back with you all. Hopefully you enjoyed Bishop Peter last week. Uh, who doesn't, really? Um, but uh, it was at the time away, I didn't get to fish because the, uh, st the seas were too rough to go out in, but I had a good visit with uh, my priest buddy back, uh, back in New Jersey. So, um, you know, if the Lord sent a prophet into our living room, you know, we'd probably listen carefully to what he had to say, right? I mean, at least that we, that's what we'd like to think. But, you know, listening to God's word isn't always as easy as it appears. For example, in our, that passage from the prophet Amos, we see a true prophet chosen, sent by God, who is then categorically rejected. And, and, and in the words of the priest at Bethel, Amos had been telling the people of Israel that they needed to return to fidelity, to the basics and the fundamentals of the covenant, following the commandments and giving up their self-indulgent idolatries. And you would think that with God's authority and, and power behind him, everyone would simply hear and obey, right? That actually is what characterizes the people of Israel, those who hear the word of God and obey. But the message that Amos brought to them challenged their comfortable status quo. And so they rejected it and sent the prophet Amos packing back to Judah. Now we see a similar phenomenon happen happening in that, pa that gospel passage. Jesus is sending out his first apostles. He's instructing them about the mission and he is equipping them for it. And part of those instructions involves the way to react when people reject what, we, what they have to say. Jesus is actually preparing them for rejection. He knows that fallen human nature doesn't like to be pushed and challenged out of the comfort zone. But his message of salvation does just that. And it must do this because the status quo is our bondage to sin and death. You know, the Lord's word necessarily pushes us out of our comfort zone. And I was reminded in thinking of that truth, that famous line from Pope Benedict XVI when he was speaking to the youth at World Youth Day in Cologne in 2005. He said this to them. He said, the world offers you comfort. But you are not made for comfort. You are made for greatness. The world offers you comfort. But you are not made for comfort. You are made for greatness. So Jesus' words challenge us to reflect on how well we listen to God's word that comes to us through his prophets, through his apostles and their successors. Are we selective listeners, picking and choosing according to what fits our comfort zone? Or are we true followers of Christ, willing to love and obey him, even if it means changing my ideas or my behavior? I mean, can we say with the psalmist, I will hear what God proclaims. I will hear what God pro proclaims. You know, our hearts are kind of like the house that, that Jesus tells his, his apostles are going to visit. If we welcome that word addressed to us, again, by the apostles and their successors, then Jesus' grace will come and remain there, bringing peace and wisdom and salvation to our hearts. Demons will be driven out. Healing will happen. So what do we prefer? Do we prefer the comfortable lie of sin and death and its bondage? Or do we prefer the uncomfortable truth of salvation? You know, great literature and art, even contemporary art, are full of images that echo this truth of our faith. Somehow built in, in the human subconscious, and artists are always the ones who pick up on this the, 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 the fastest, 
They have awareness that this fallen world, in this fallen world, that the easy way, the comfortable way, is usually not the right way. In fact, it rarely is. And one vivid example that I was reminded of was that uh, 1999 blockbuster movie, The Matrix. You know, the first movie of that trilogy made a huge splash and impact at the, at, on people's hearts precisely because it tapped into this truth, the comfortable lie or the uncomfortable truth. And it, if you've, well, I imagine a lot of you might have seen it, but the, the main character, Neo, at, at one point in the movie, is offered a choice. Morpheus, his mentor figure, holds in front of him two capsules. If he swallows the blue capsule, he will return to normal, everyday, comfortable, pleasant condition, a condition that appears real, but is actually a computer-generated illusion to keep him comfortable, unfulfilled, and still a slave in the Matrix. In fact, so that the Matrix can suck his life away to help provide power to power it. If he swallows the red capsule, he will be violently awakened and painfully extracted from the computer-generated illusory world. And from then on, he will be a renegade, and evil antagonists will never stop hunting him, trying to destroy him. And he will have to live in hardship and in danger, in constant discomfort, but, but he will be truly free, truly awake, and truly capable of living a meaningful and fulfilling life, ultimately becoming, embracing his mission and becoming the hero who brings down the oppressive matrix. And so the choice is before us too. Do we want to stay with the blue pill or the red one? The comfort of a lie or the discomfort of the truth? You know, Jesus, this, this kind of illustrates the truth of, of our faith. Jesus is showing us that following him entails following the way of the cross and of self-denial, not of comfort and self-indulgence. Remember, we were not made for comfort. We were made for greatness. But he is also showing us that in his cross is the door of the resurrection and to eternal life and to the adventure of friendship with him that gives everlasting meaning to our lives and what we do. So listening to God can be uncomfortable. There's no escape from that because he loves us so much that he will not allow us to languish in the slavery of the status quo of sin and death. He loves us too much to let us vegetate in our comfort zone. He always is wanting us to lead us farther down the path of spiritual maturity, farther up the mountain of Christian wisdom and courage and holiness. And in the Mass, he, re he reminds us that he is worthy of such a commitment, that he will not let us down. He is the good shepherd who gives up his own life for us in the Eucharistic sacrifice. And what happens is, is that when we allow the Lord's word of truth and salvation to penetrate us, it does something to us. It reconfigures us. It reconfigures our very being, our priorities, our identity, giving us our truest self. And from there, he sends us on mission. You know, you think about what, what Jesus is doing with those apostles, right? He does the same with us as being members of his own body. How does he equip his apostles on this mission? Don't take any money. Don't even take any extra food. Preach the message of repentance. Have the power over the demons and, and the power to heal. So what is he doing? He's like, he is not equipping them in, according to the ways of the world or to equipping them for a comfortable life 
What is he doing rather? He's stripping them down of the things that they don't need. What do they need? To be dependent on him and to look to him for everything that he will provide for their needs because the, the needs of the body are not the, the main source of the mission. It's the mission of salvation. And so he gives them his, his, the power of his word and he gives him his own divine power to drive out demons and to heal people. And guess what? It works. They do these things. People do hear the word of repentance. Demons are driven out. People are here. And so how do we do that with us? Well, the first is that first step of receiving that word. Receiving the truth. Letting... The, the Lord's prophetic word push us out of our comfort zone and into mission. And in, in terms of sharing that word with others, you know, it's not in a preachy, sort of moralistic sort of way. It's by sharing, simply sharing what Jesus is doing in my life. How is my life different because I follow Jesus? What comfortable lie is he trying to shake me out of? What false dependence and self-reliance is he calling me out of? And he will do the same with us to strip us down of what, does not, what is not needed so that we can focus and have this single-mindedness and this holy dependence on his power. You know, I was, I was talking about a couple weeks ago how we, uh, in the parish, we're, we're participating in this amazing parish movement and talking about the three cultures that we want to build in the parish, a culture of prayer, a culture of healthy teamwork, and a culture of active discipleship. And, you know, I, I offered that, that very basic sort of way of sharing the faith with others. Is you, you meet somebody, it could be a family member, it could be somebody in the supermarket, you smile, Ask them how their day is going in a sincere sort of way. Make eye contact with them. And then simply ask them, is there something that I could pray for for you? And so um, I was talking to one of our parishioners, and she came up. She said, I tried that at the supermarket. And she said, yeah, I was, I was in the checkout. The cashier was there and, ch and checking out. And she did that. She smiled. How's your day going? Is there anything that I could pray for? And the cashier was like, was start, literally like physically startled, you know. And she, she, she just said, uh, uh, I, I am not ready for that. I'm like, that's okay. I'll pray for you, you know. And people, uh, they're, but I think even though she was startled in that moment, I bet you she thought about God that day, maybe in that precise moment. Maybe there's a seed, a little seed planted that's opening up in her heart right now because one of our parishioners had simply the courage and the joy just to share that with, with her. So let's allow Jesus' words to penetrate us, to shake us out of the comfortable lie of the matrix of sin and death, to awaken us to his presence and his truth, and to allow us to shape us into heralds of his saving gospel. We were not made for comfort. Take the red pill because we were made for greatness.